Hi friends, and welcome to this week's episode. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a pretty long video about hormone replacement as inspired by an article that was in the New York Times entitled, Women Have Been Misled About Menopause. So you can look back a couple of weeks if you wanna dig into all that detail, because it was a lot of detail and a lot of information. And interestingly, ever since then, I've been getting lots and lots of questions about some of the nuances that I mentioned in that longer talk. So today, I just wanna clarify some of those points because they are really important. And sometimes it can just be overwhelming and too much information. So you can review that video from a couple of weeks ago to get all of the details. But here are some of the common questions that I get. Don't I have to stop taking my hormones after X number of years? Or my doctor said I cannot take hormones because I went through menopause more than five years ago or more than 10 years ago. You name the flavor, there's lots of different varieties of that particular question. Or breast cancer goes up after five years of hormone use, so you should stop it. Or you cannot take hormones if you have a higher risk of breast cancer based on family history or all of these kinds of statements that physicians have told you, because many of you guys have told me that your doctors have actually been saying those things and they are still being said. So let's just kind of go through those so that you have some ammunition, so to speak, when you go to see your physician and have some good questions that you can ask if they tell you no. Well, first of all, I do not like being told no if I want something. So <laughs> You may be like me. I don't think it's physician's place to say no, that you cannot do anything. And I talked about that in detail a couple of weeks ago. But it's important to understand why some doctors still persist in telling us no when the benefits of hormone replacement have been so well elucidated by lots and lots of studies. So let me just go through some of the big ones so that we can keep those fresh in mind. First of all, digging into detail a little bit more about this so-called 10-year estrogen window. And I've talked about that lots of times here before. The idea is that we want to start on estrogen within the first 10 years of menopause, if possible. That does not mean, and your doctor should not think that it means that you cannot take hormones if you started menopause more than 10 years ago. Another funny thing is that a lot of doctors just round that up to 60. So I hear this all the time, if you're 60 and you haven't taken hormones before, you cannot start on hormone replacement. It's amazing how these numbers came up. That's assuming that you went through menopause at exactly 50 and also assuming a bunch of other things that I'll get into in a minute. So first of all, that is not true. If you wanna start hormones and you went through menopause more than 10 years ago, the answer is not no, the answer should be, let's talk about that and why this 10-year estrogen window is even a topic and then let you decide if you want to take hormones or not. So let's back up and figure out why this happened in the first place. Well, going back to that infamous Women's Health Initiative study, for those of you who've been living under a rock and don't know what that is yet, <laughs> that was a study that was published, well, it was stopped, it wasn't exactly published, at that time because it wasn't finished yet, but it was stopped abruptly in 2002 in the summer because there was a fear from at least one of the authors that there was a higher than acceptable increase in breast cancer, blood clot, heart disease, and stroke, which for lots of reasons that I'm not gonna go over again today turned out not actually to be true. So you can look at the video I made two weeks ago and get some more information about that. But what they did find was in the group of patients who started on hormone replacement and they were over 60, there was a slightly increased risk in blood clot, heart disease, and stroke. Well, as you recall, this was a very unhealthy group of women. Average age was 63, and they were taking estrogen by mouth. So we know that taking estrogen by mouth increases the risk of blood clotting events, including blood clots that can travel from your leg into your lung, heart attack, stroke, all of those things because oral estrogen in the way that it goes through our liver can upset blood clotting factors. So in the Women's Health Initiative study that I've mentioned many times, we really should not use at all anymore as a source of our wisdom regarding hormones. 
because number one, it's very old. Number two, it was done very poorly and all the other things that we know. We should not be quoting from that study. Yet, in that study, because the patients who were started on hormones more than 10 years after menopause had an increased risk of those things, that got extrapolated so that physicians even nowadays say you should not take estrogen when you have more than 10 years past menopause. Well, that, that's really putting apples and oranges together, isn't it? It's taking data from a group of women who were not like most of you, and they were taking a drug that we do not take anymore, so we don't give estrogen by mouth because of that very reason. And as we've talked about lots of times when estrogen's not given by mouth, we don't see that increased risk of blood clotting. So that's true. And they also found that there wasn't quite so much benefit as far as reduction in osteoporosis, reduction in heart disease, not an increase, and possible reduction in Alzheimer's disease. Well, yeah, it would be great to start on it earlier, wouldn't it? If you had the opportunity to start on hormone replacement right at the time of menopause, that would be fantastic because you'd get the most benefit. So there's no question that if you've had 10 years without hormones, your body's going to have suffered in some ways that may not be reparable. Uh, for example, we've lost some bone. We may not ever be able to get that back. We've had some changes in the blood vessels in our heart and some changes in our brain that are not going to be repaired completely. However, we can still get some benefit. Now, there were a few little caveats. So here's what I do. If you're 62 and you went through menopause when you were 48, and so you've been 14 years outside of menopause, I'm not going to tell you you cannot take estrogen. We're going to look at your particular health situation. So if you are a 300-pound smoker who has stents in your heart because you've had a heart attack before and you've probably got some plaques that are floating around waiting to pop off and give you another heart attack or stroke. There is some evidence that it's not a good idea to take estrogen in that situation. Now that evidence all comes from taking estrogen by mouth, so we don't really know if there's any increase in any of those risks if we use it transdermally, and frankly, probably there's not, because we know that transdermal estrogen does not increase the risk of blood clotting. But even if you wanted to play the devil's advocate, yes, that might be a patient that we decided not to, we meaning patient and me together, decided not to take estrogen, and maybe to try something else, like progesterone or testosterone. So it's never a hard no. It's more a look at your particular situation, so when I have patients who are 65 or older or have gone through menopause you know, quite a bit more than 10 years ago, we want to make sure that you've got good heart health. We want to look at your lipid panel, maybe have you see a cardiologist, make sure that you don't have existing heart disease that's being missed. All of those things are individual to each patient. So it really does not make sense to say that every single patient who has been through menopause for 10 years or more should not take estrogen. That just, there's no way that could be true because humans are all different. And in fact, that data came from that really old study. So one thing to remember in the Women's Health Initiative study, women who started estrogen over 60 had an increased risk of blood clotting, well, minimal blood clotting, heart disease, stroke, possibly had an increased risk of Alzheimer's as well, but that was so complicated and confused with other data, we really can't say what the risk of Alzheimer's is or whether there's still protection against Alzheimer's when we start it later, because we haven't studied that yet. But certainly the safety profile is very high and the benefits can still be very great because a lot of us still have hot flashes, night sweats, certainly vaginal dryness, and osteoporosis is just starting to get worse. So a lot of things are getting worse when we're in our 60s and older. So that would be a really good time to be on estrogen. It would be a really bad time to stop it. <laughs> so let's just kind of think through this. If we're trying to prevent things like osteoporosis, colon cancer, which we know is decreased by estrogen, sexual dysfunction, heart disease. We know estrogen reduces heart disease unless you take it by mouth, right? We all know this now. The worst time to stop it would be when the risk of those diseases is going up. So if you see your doctor and they tell you that you cannot take estrogen because you're over 60, or you can't start it because you're over 60, or any combination of those things, 
Just remember, they are quoting from the Women's Health Initiative study I talked two weeks ago about why we should not do that. And that data does not apply to every patient and more than likely it doesn't apply to you. And it certainly doesn't apply to me. So it's critical that your provider looks into your personal health history before they say no. And if somebody says no without doing that, I would politely walk out of the office and find somebody else <laughs> who wants to talk to you more about your individual health instead of making up these rules, rules that are based in very old evidence that is all mixed up. Does that make sense? So the 10 year estrogen window is a preference. Yeah, it'd be great if we could start on estrogen in the first month after menopause, certainly in the first five to 10 years. But it is not true that you cannot take it just because you went through menopause 10 years ago. That's not true. It just means that it requires a little bit of discussion. Okay, so that's a common question. And then how long can I take it? That's another common question. Forever. So in my case, because I'm currently very healthy, knock on wood, hopefully we'll stay that way. There is no reason to stop taking your hormone replacement. I'm going to have my pellets in my bottom or whatever the current best way to get hormones is 50 years from now. Hopefully I'll live for 50 more years. I will be wearing those when they put me into the fire. So that's my current plan. Now, if I get an estrogen receptor positive breast cancer myself personally, I will probably stop my estrogen for a short time while I'm getting treated, and then I'll start back on it again once my treatment's over. Short of that, we can take it forever. And science does support not stopping our hormones for those very reasons that I mentioned. Why would we want to stop them right when the risk of all of those diseases is going up? So that's another common question. Another one I hear all the time is breast cancer risk goes up after five years of hormone use. That's a very commonly repeated sentence that doctors were taught 20 and a half years ago when that study was published. The reason that we were taught that is because in the group of women who took Premarin and Provera, which we don't use anymore, by mouth, which we do not do anymore, after five years or more of use, there was a minuscule increased risk in breast cancer, and it was such a small increase that many people don't think it was even what we call statistically significant. But even if you played the devil's advocate and believe that was true, we don't give those medications anymore, and it wasn't the estrogen, remember, it was the Provera that caused the problem. So you do not have to stop taking your hormones after five years, or any time for that matter, unless there's a health issue that makes it very important for you to stop, like having breast cancer yourself. Which brings me to another common question, which is, wait a minute, I've got lots of breast cancer in my family. My mother had breast cancer, my aunt, my doctor told me I can't take hormone replacement. There is no evidence that there is an increased risk of breast cancer for women who have a family history of breast cancer who start on estrogen. There just isn't. And so that just goes back to people making up ideas that sound like they make sense based on science, but there's really no science to support that statement. So even if you have a gene that predisposes you to breast cancer, just say you have the BRCA gene or, or one of the other genes that increases your risk of breast cancer. You are coming into the situation. You're walking into my office with an increased risk of breast cancer. You are coming in with that risk, if that makes sense. But there's no evidence that taking estrogen is going to increase that risk. That risk is already there, right? So you're coming in with that risk. So the question is, will taking estrogen increase it further than it already exists. The answer is there's no evidence suggesting that it will. In fact, if you take testosterone, it's going to decrease your incidence of breast cancer. So if you have a family history of breast cancer, that does not mean you cannot take hormones. That is, that is really a stretch, a big stretch. And a lot of the scientific data that has been published, as we know, has now turned out to be incorrect. So all of the questions around timing and hormones, like how long can I take it? Do I have to stop it? Is there a certain amount of time before my breast cancer risk goes up? All of those questions were based in the Women's Health Initiative study using drugs we don't use anymore, patient population that does not represent 
most of you, and certainly not me. So if you're still told those things by your physician, you could politely ask them where they got that information if you're feeling cheeky and they won't be able to tell you. <laughs> or if they tell you it was a Women's Health Initiative study, you can just smile and nod. Or if you're feeling less cheeky, you can just leave and find another doctor who wants to talk to you in a more personalized manner. So what we recommend now, based in science, is starting on hormone replacement, meaning bioidentical estradiol, not by mouth, but something transdermal, and progesterone if you have a uterus, or if you have anxiety or insomnia or lots of other symptoms that progesterone helps and testosterone if you want to improve your bone density, reduce breast cancer risk, gain some muscle, have better sex drive, lots of benefits from the appropriate very small amount of testosterone. So all three hormones would be appropriate to start, ideally immediately when you go through menopause, but certainly if possible within the first five to 10 years, not because it's dangerous, but because you're missing out on some of the benefit that you could otherwise receive. So. Really important when you're on hormone replacement or taking any medications whatsoever, make sure you're followed annually so that we can check your medical history, make sure nothing has to change. And new things are coming out all the time. You want your doctor to review, well, what's new? Is this still the best thing I should be taking? Or should I be thinking about taking that new thing, whatever it is? Because hormone replacement that we take now, what I'm taking now was not available 20 years ago. And so I'm quite sure in 20 years, we'll have something even better. And some exciting news about myself. I had my bone density test and mammogram done last week, and my bone density has improved over the past five years, which is so exciting. And it's not unusual. It happens to all our patients too. But when I got that report, it's just true that these hormones, these natural hormones that we've had all our lives prevent bone loss. And I have osteoporosis in my family. I can guarantee you that without hormone replacement, I would already be at osteoporosis or close to it. So really important. I made a video a month or two ago about osteoporosis, but I'm so excited about that. My bone density is the same as a 30 year old. I don't think it was even the same as a 30 year old when I was 30. <laughs> If that makes sense, it's better than it was when I was 30, and I'm not even kidding. It's kind of miraculous, isn't it? So yes, we should really all be taking this stuff. Anyway, I hope that clears up some of your questions because those are some really common ones that I've been hearing from you these past two weeks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And hey, don't forget, if you want to meet with me in person and you don't live in Texas, come to Texas May 5th through the 8th having an amazing retreat with some incredible other women. You can see the link below. If you want an opportunity to sit with me, we can talk one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. You'll have an opportunity to have lab work done before the retreat. If you really want me to sit down with you and go through that with you, I'm happy to do so. That's a really great opportunity to see me and talk to me and face to face and I can look at your hormone profile and give you some one on one advice. So we do have, I think, three or four spots available as of today, but they're going fast. So click the link below, come to the retreat. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, and I can't wait to see you next week.